Our imagination has always been captured by events that we cannot see, comprehend or explain, especially when they happen in the darkness of the night. Throughout history, countless terrifying legends have been born that serve the only purpose of scaring people. However, in most cases, these stories had something in common. Somebody saw something they couldn't describe or understand. Flashing eyes and eerie sounds coming from the shadows, unexplained tragedies, and unsolved disappearances follow the mystery of one of the most well-known creatures of American folklore, the legend of the Mothman. Imagine walking down a dark and desolate dirt road in the middle of the night. Dead silence surrounds you, but sometimes a branch snaps and the bushes seem to move. You often glance behind your back to see if anyone is following you, and then, out of nowhere, a huge, humanoid, dark creature with enormous black wings appears, with red eyes glowing like hell. You freeze upon meeting its gaze, and then suddenly you hear an ear-splitting shriek. You start running, but the creepy creature flies up into the air and chases you from the sky. Then it vanishes, and you don't know where it might be. This is roughly the experience of most people who reported encountering the mysterious figure of the Mothman, and it is worth mentioning that most of the alleged witnesses cannot be called sensationalists. Therefore, in the beginning, there was no particular reason to doubt their words, especially because it wasn't just one person who saw something but many and all of them said the same thing. Almost 60 years ago, on November 12, 1966, five men were digging a grave in a cemetery near the small town of Clendenin, West Virginia, when they claimed to have seen a dark humanoid figure flying over their heads, moving from tree to tree. They couldn't identify the creature, but later described it as a brown human being and reported it to the police. This was the first sighting of the Mothman, which has since become deeply embedded in the area's culture and was later followed by further sightings. Three days later, on November 15, 1966, at about midnight, two young couples, Roger and Linda Scarberry and Steve and Mary Mallet from Point Pleasant, West Virginia, about 80 miles northwest of Clendenin, also informed the authorities of seeing a similar-looking creature. According to them, the terrifying beast followed them for a while along Route 62 as they passed the Clifton F. McClintic Wildlife Management Area, locally known as the TNT Area, in Mason County, about five miles north of Point Pleasant. The name comes from its World War II history, when the West Virginia Ordnance Works produced TNT there for the United States Army. For safety reasons, the company also built 100 above-ground, steel-reinforced concrete bunkers which were dubbed igloos because of their domed construction. They described the mysterious figure as a huge, white, human-shaped creature with almost 10-foot-long wings and eyes that glowed red when the car's headlights shone on it. It was more than 6 feet 5 inches tall, had visible muscles, and had its wings resting against its back. They said it looked like a man with wings, but that the head was not an outstanding characteristic. Mallette added that, it is apparently afraid of light. The next day, the first article about the scary figure was published in the Point Pleasant Register, and the mainstream media didn't hesitate to take over the story of the four young people. Scarberry claimed that the Phantom couldn't have been a figment of his imagination. He said if they had seen the thing alone, they wouldn't have told anyone. However, in this case, four people faced the same creature. They said, quote, It was a bird or something. It definitely wasn't a flying saucer. It wasn't like anything you'd see on TV or in a monster movie. According to the article, sheriff's deputies and city police went to the scene, but were unable to find anything. The friends were in Scarberry's car between 11.30 p.m. and midnight when they spotted the creature near the old power plant adjacent to the old National Guard armory buildings. The register wrote that the creature was seen standing on three occasions and was described as being extremely fast, about 100 miles an hour in flight, but was a clumsy runner. 
Deputy Millard Halstead said he had seen dust in the vicinity of a coal field, and it could have been caused by the bird. The witnesses also stated that the last time they saw it was at the gate of the C.C. Lewis farm on Route 62. They heard a sound like wings flapping, and it rose straight up, like a helicopter. In the following days, further strange things kept occurring. The Gettysburg Times reported eight additional sightings in three days after the first claims. For example, two volunteer firemen thought they saw a huge bird-like figure, again with glowing red eyes. Authorities later received more than 100 reports from all ages and groups of the community, and the most concerning was that everybody described the creature the same way. For example, Newell Partridge, a contractor from Salem, West Virginia, claimed that one night he noticed strange patterns appear on his television and later heard a weird noise coming from the garden. When he went outside with a flashlight to investigate the source, he found himself shining the light into a pair of red eyes. Its eyes glowed like bicycle reflectors, he said. Shortly after, the creature vanished and the man could not find his German shepherd anymore. According to Partridge, Bandit followed the red eyes to the woods and never returned. His owner looked for him, but only found paw prints going in circles and suddenly vanishing. More than a year after the gravediggers sent in their reports, on December 15, 1967, at approximately 5 p.m., the U.S. Highway 35 bridge connecting Point Pleasant and Gallipolis, Ohio, suddenly collapsed into the Ohio River, killing 46 people and injuring nine. The traffic was heavy. 37 vehicles were crossing the bridge span and 31 of those automobiles fell with the bridge. It was constructed in 1928 and dubbed the Silver Bridge because it was the country's first silvery aluminum painted bridge. It is worth mentioning that some unique engineering techniques were featured on the Silver Bridge, such as high tension eye bar chains, a unique anchorage system, and rocker towers that allowed the bridge to move due to shifting loads and changes in the chain lengths due to temperature variations. On that evening, the tragedy struck within seconds while many people were out enjoying the holidays, buying Christmas trees and presents. Without warning, a single eye bar near the top of the bridge on the Ohio side cracked. They weren't even aware of the coming disaster until they heard a sound some witnesses described as, quote, the sound of the collapse was like that of a shotgun. Before the catastrophe, many claimed to have seen the mysterious Mothman flying above the bridge but there isn't any evidence supporting these sightings. The incident made the legend of the supernatural figure even more well-known and gained wider attention as many linked the tragedy with its alleged activity, especially because no one in the area reported seeing it after the crash, as if the tragedy was the culmination of some kind of evil mission or plan. On the other hand, there is also a story about how the Mothman may have saved lives. In 1976, a group of miners in Freiburg, Germany, stated that they saw a headless figure with glowing red eyes at the exit of their mine. At first, they thought that while they were just seeing a man in a trench coat, but they soon realized it was not a coat, but a huge black figure with folded wings. They stood there frozen for a while, looking at the terrifying creature, when suddenly it let out a blood-curdling scream and the miners fled away. About an hour later, they felt a smaller earthquake, after which a cloud of dust poured out of the mine, which later collapsed as well. The figure of the Mothman also came into discussion in connection with the 1986 Chernobyl disaster and the Fukushima nuclear tragedy in 2011. In the latter case, an American tourist named Marcus Pules was in Japan when he and a friend were walking in the vicinity of the nuclear power plant, when suddenly they also heard a loud screech from the direction of the facility. The man later described what he saw as a black giant standing on the roof of one of the buildings, and shortly afterward, it unfolded its enormous wings. Following this, the beast started circling above the power plant and then flew closer to the friends. They saw its glowing red eyes, filling them with terror. The dark figure vanished as quickly as it had appeared. He only heard about the nuclear tragedy in Fukushima after returning to the United States. According to the World Nuclear Association, it is estimated that the earthquake and the ensuing tsunami 
resulted in the deaths of 19,729 people, with another 2,559 still missing, and devastated communities all over Japan. In 1986, in the days preceding the catastrophe, several Chernobyl workers in the control room of the nuclear power plant allegedly claimed to have seen something they called the Black Bird of Chernobyl. Those who saw the creature reported having terrifying dreams and unsettling phone calls. According to the story, after the explosion, a large black bird-like creature with a 20-foot wingspan glided through the irradiated smoke pouring from the reactor, and it was never seen again. In 2009, just before the swine flu outbreak, residents of La Junta, Mexico, also claimed to have seen the Mothman. Witnesses Angela Mendez and Viviana Ledesma said they heard loud screeches coming from the Miyaka Cemetery, which filled them with terror. In March, a student also claimed that a red-eyed giant chased him for minutes. Local police tried to find the dark figure, but they didn't find success. Several people after 9-11 also said they witnessed a creature flying between the towers just before the second plane crash. Others later reported that the mysterious men in black tried to silence them in the following days. It is important to emphasize that although countless sightings of the Mothman have been listed and collected in the last 60 years, strangely, nobody had any device to actually record the phenomenon. Therefore, we can only rely on descriptions. All that might have changed in 2016, when a man who asked to remain anonymous was traveling on Route 2 in West Virginia and took a photograph of something. Something that reminded a lot of people of the flying cryptid. The man later sent the photo to WCHS-TV, a Charleston channel. But according to science writer Sharon A. Hill, the most sensible explanation for the picture is that it shows a bird, perhaps an owl, carrying a frog or another kind of prey in the air. Witnesses describe the apparition as a winged, black, sometimes headless giant floating in the dark with a flaming gaze that chills you to the bone. Some think the red-eyed shadow came from the depths of hell or maybe from the unknown empires of the universe. The winged humanoid lurks outside, chases cars, and attacks pets. Beyond the legends, many have tried to approach the existence of the Mothman scientifically. According to Robert L. Smith, a biologist at the University of West Virginia, the description of the creature is very similar to that of a sandhill crane. A larger sandhill crane can be almost as tall as a human, with a seven-foot wingspan and red patches around the eyes. And since the species isn't native to West Virginia, it is possible that a crane veered off its usual migration path. Therefore, it's possible that this bird was mistaken for the mysterious creature. Also, probably everyone has heard about the red eye effect. Several people said that they only saw the phantom's red eyes when they shone the light into them. Some experts suggested that maybe barred owls were behind the secret. But in other reports, when the shining eye wasn't noted, it was statistically more likely that witnesses were seeing and misidentifying a great blue heron instead. Folklorist Jan Harold Brunvind pointed out that accounts of the original 1966-1967 Mothman reports typically claim that while at least 100 people saw the creature, with many more being afraid to report their sightings, in most cases, the written sources omit to cite specific witnesses. The Mothman phenomenon has also received extensive coverage in the media, with some sources linking sightings to UFOs, while others state that the Mothman's home was the military storage facility. However, the many recent accounts and much earlier folk tales indicate that something actual or real may have caused the panic and influenced existing folklore. The characteristics of the legend are similar to demonic archetypes seen by people who have experienced sleep paralysis, for example, when in most cases people are approached by a dark figure in their sleep and they cannot wake up or move. Therefore, it's possible that the Mothman is also the manifestation of human fears. Rosemary Hathaway, an associate professor of English at West Virginia University, said in an interview that, There definitely is a long storytelling tradition in West Virginia, and I think it tends, historically, to follow along two lines. Either it's tall tales, or a long tradition of ghost stories and the supernatural and weird things happening in the woods. That sort of thing. 
My sense is that cryptid stories are the more modern versions of ghost stories. Kim Stryker, who teaches folklore at George Mason University, reckons this supernatural interest springs up in society when a distraction is needed. She said that people seek out evil in history to, in a way, inoculate themselves from scary or terrible events, explaining the allure of dark tourism, or why people intentionally vacation in places associated with paranormal events or true crime. The story of Mothman, unlike most of the other cryptids, has a definitive start date and location, thanks to the Point Pleasant couples and the unknown grave diggers of Clendenin. For example, while we know that the jaw-dropping Patterson-Gimlin Bigfoot footage was taken in California in 1967, the mythology of the giant hairy beast actually roots back hundreds of years to Native American folklore. So we can't point to an exact date for the alleged first discovery. At the same time, the story of Mothman shows similarities with other well-known legendary monsters, such as Godzilla, whose creation is also linked to World War II military activity. Others emphasize that the birth of the red-eyed shadow happened almost parallelly with the renaissance of cryptid mania and the Cold War-era UFO sightings when people lived in constant fear of a nuclear apocalypse. The thought of the possibility of radioactive pollution combined with the mysteries of the skies can easily capture the imagination, especially if the unconscious is already familiar with the concept, because one of Batman's supervillains, Killer Moth, first appeared in the comics in 1951, 15 years before the events of Point Pleasant. Researchers on the topic found stories all over the world, but online forums nowadays are also full of witness accounts about the red-eyed demon. The Mothman Museum and Research Center was opened in 2005 in Point Pleasant, and they also host the annual Mothman Festival every September since 2002, featuring TNT bus tours, live bands, cosplay, and other attractions. Usually over 15,000 people attend the festival. The town also erected a giant chrome-polished statue of the creature with steel wings and red eyes. Paranormal writer John Keel published The Mothman Prophecies in 1975, which is likely the most influential book on the subject, as the 2002 thriller starring Richard Gere and Laura Linney was based on it and the real events of Point Pleasant. I massively recommend it to everyone who hasn't seen it yet. At this point, we can probably say that there are two kinds of people. Those who really saw something in the darkness and those who report sightings only for attention. But whatever the truth is, always be cautious in the darkness. Thank you.